Happy Friday the 13th, everybody. In honor of the spooky time of the year, and the fact that I miss Halloween because I'm going to be kind of what I thought, I'd like to present to you a ta- Ah, hold on one second, my phone's ringing. Hello? What? It's not? I know I'm off schedule, okay? Editing is hard. Fine, I'll just make up my own scary holiday. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Editing will be super easy with just one person on an outdated laptop. Do you have a better idea? Then shut the f*** up and go away. Okay, 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 we, okay. Okay. So happy, happy Animal Spookfest. Yeah, yeah whatever, we'll just call it Spookfest. Now, I'm not the kind of guy to play scary video games, as I'm what one would call, in layman's terms, a p I like to stick to more light-hearted fun games, and I get my thrill and scares from action shooter games as they are, like Halo and Gears of War. However, game developers aren't one to skimp out on putting some freaky deaky things in their video games that leave very disturbing images in your mind. Now, for this list, don't expect to see any Silent Hill, or Dead Space, or... <sighs> also, these are actually from the game. No fan theories allowed, as that's a list for another day. I'm looking at you, Ben. You're not welcome here. These are disturbances that happen when you least expect them. With that out of the way, let's get started. Target. Now expect this list to be filled with a lot of old school games, but this game is by far the oldest. Berserk was a game released in 1980 for the Atari 2600. The objective of the game is to go room to room, shooting up robots and racking up points. To be perfectly honest, it's not that hard of a game, or at least not in the beginning. Just don't get too comfortable, because after a while, the main antagonist comes chasing after you, who is revealed to be a bouncing, sentient smiley face, who goes by the name of Evil Otto. From there on in, you're constantly being chased by Evil Otto, and are never given a chance to stop, because if he catches you, he'll kill you. There's always been something so unsettling about Evil Otto to me. The whole smiley face charade he's pulling off won't trick me, though. I do have to hand it to Stern Electronics, the developer behind Berserk. No other game made my stomach turn like Berserk. Except E.T. And Pac-Man. <sighs> but that's, that's for a whole different reason that I, I don't want to go into right now. Batman! Batman. Besides bats, Bruce Wayne doesn't appear to be afraid of anything, which doesn't really make sense if you think about it. I mean, I'm afraid of clowns, and you don't see me being friggin' clown man, defender of all that is funny. That, however, doesn't stop Scarecrow, an antagonist of Batman, from scaring the Cape Crusader when he gets trapped in the Arkham Asylum. After first encountering Scarecrow, Batman unknowingly inhaled some of his fear gas. He starts to notice that some things are not quite right, as apparently Commissioner Gordon is dead, and Oracle isn't picking up the line. This weirdness continues for a while, until he comes across three body bags. He opens up two of them, and what does he find? Oh, you know, nothing too unusual. Just the bodies of his deceased parents. You know, the norm. This is super disturbing by itself, but add the fact that they're staring at you with their lifeless eyes and blaming you for their death just adds to the effect. Jeez, Mom, I was ten! Give me a break! Get back in your bag! Huh. What's in the third body? Oh my god! Up next on the list is the cute ball of adorableness we all know and love, Kirby. He's so cute and delectable, and he- OH MY 
God, did he just eat that guy? OMG, W-E-T-F, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. That's right. Kirby isn't that cute or adorable when you realize that he eats enemies in order to gain powers. Actually, that's not that disturbing. I mean, everyone already knows that and accepts it as a fact. But did you know that Kirby's stomach isn't a stomach at all? No. Instead, it's a portal to another friggin' dimension. So if you get eaten by this adorable alien, you'll be floating around in space for the rest of your miserable life. Because Kirby wasn't misleading enough as he was. The Sonic series has its own load of disturbances, like Sonic.exe, Perfect Chaos, and uh... But nothing beats this disturbing thing from Sonic CD. By accessing the sound test from the main menu, there are multiple hidden images that can be found. These range from Anime Sonic to DJ Sonic. Drop those funky beats, MC Chilladog. But there's one screen that sticks in my mind more than any other. Batman Sonic! So this is why we never knew who his parents were. But, but seriously, it, it's, it's this one right here. Let's break it down, shall we? We've got a spooky dark overlay, multiple disturbing Sonic faces, and a message in Japanese that translates to Fun is infinite with Sega Enterprises and it's signed by Majin as in Satan. That's right, Satan made Sonic CD. Think about it. Next, please! Now you're probably thinking to yourself that if the number 6 spot is going to something in Super Mario Bros. 2, it's going to be Birdo. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean Oscar, that's right, he's totally a dude. Birdo is the bird thing that the Shy Guys ride. Nintendo just went along with it for all these years. Well, I know your game, Oscar. You may fool everybody else, especially Yoshi, but you can't fool me! But instead, I'm going to go with the death of the main antagonist, King Ward. Three things are very disturbing about this. First, unlike every other time Mario on the game, Peter Boss, whether it be with lava or black holes, this is the most realistic way of defeating him in the entire series. Choking. Second, King Moore is dead. You can tell by the actions on his eyes. He's not quote unquote dead, like Bowser. He, he's full on dead. The Chompers are carrying away his dead body to devour. And third, other than a cameo on Link's Awakening, we never see Ward again never seen or mentioned by any of the characters for the entire series. Could it be that Wart was just a symbol of trying something new and improved, only to have people complain and want to go back to the good old days? Or was he just a failed villain by the Nintendo Corporation, never being able to see the light of day again after the failed sales of Super Mario Bros. 2? I guess this is a mystery that'll never be solved. Oh wait, yes it will, because the entire game was a freaking dream! There are many Pokemon with disturbing Pokédex entries. Cubone wears the skull of its mother, Drifloon kidnaps innocent children, and half of the Mr. Mind population is female. Must be tough during mating season, if you catch my drift, loon. It was a really tough choice to make. Hypno was an extremely close runner-up, as he feeds on the dreams of children, and even one time took the life of a child. Yeah, sure, one time. I'm onto you, Hypno. But in the end, the most disturbing Pokemon goes to... <laughs> Haunter. Why Haunter, you may ask? Well, according to its Pokedex entry, its tongue is made of a gas so noxious that if a person is licked, they will shake relentlessly until they eventually drop dead. Yikes, and I thought choking was a bad way to go. Many people wonder what happened to Misty in the Pokemon cartoon series. Well, now you know. Childhood ruined. As far as Zelda bosses go, they've always been more intimidating than scary. Hell, the scariest Zelda boss is Rosetta from 
Twilight Princess, and all she does is... <laughs> but this is a disturbing list, not a scary list. And the most disturbing Zelda boss comes from Zelda's first foray into 3D, Ocarina of Time. This mini-boss can be found in two places, at the bottom of a dark, scary well, and in the middle of a dark, scary graveyard. I can already tell this is going to be good. This mini-boss starts with ominous music, as well as hands sticking out of the ground. But don't get too close, because if you do, then this- OH MY GOD PLEASE DON'T LOOK ME! OH MY GOD NO WHAT THE FUCK IN AWAY- ah! It's hard to believe that a game with such a happy tone and fun-loving opening could have such a disturbing level. The cursing flower pots and egg pooping come close, but nothing is more disturbing in Banjo-Kazooie than Clanker. You meet this robot, shark, whale, hybrid thing in Clanker's Cavern, the third world of this famous 3D rareware platformer. While he may look menacing, he's just a harmless garbage disposal for Gruntilda the Witch, eating nothing but garbage and waste. While exploring the outside of Clanker, one thing pops into your mind. What is Clanker? Is he a robot, or a shark, or a whale? Because he looks like a robot, but he's got flesh wounds, and a blowhole. Wait, what? But it gets really disturbing when Banjo-Kazooie are forced to go inside Clanker to get the remaining item. You can see the pain that this thing must be going through, as his insides are filled with enemies, sores, and large metal blades. So I guess he's a robot, but why does he have rotten teeth that hurt him? Man, whatever. I gotta say though, that I do feel bad for the big guy. All the good guys get a happy ending, but Clanker is stuck being Grunty's garbage eater until the day she dies, which she probably won't. So to make you feel better, this video is dedicated to you, buddy. Now I'm not too big on RPGs, the most in depth I'll go is with Pokemon, Mario, and South Park, and maybe Final Fantasy VII. But I have to give credit where credit is due, and Earthbound, the cult classic for the SNES, deserves as much credit as possible. This game revolutionized the RPG franchise as we know it, so why is it on the list? I honestly have no friggin idea, I forgot. This game is bright and cheery and fun. The most disturbing thing I can think of is a cult dressed all in blue. Dabu di, dabu die. I honestly don't remember why it's on the list, so I'm just gonna move on to number one. Oh wait, yes I do, it's this Nightmare Fuel! The final boss of the game, Gygus, may not look like much at first, but trust me, once it gets to its second phase, the shivers start to go down your spine. First of all, what am I looking at right now? I get that Gygus is an alien, but this is too much. This is mind rape! Speaking of mind rape, this music, what is it? It's so eerie and disturbing, with a static distortion and... Ugh. And that's not even the worst of it. He's fatally wounded, the music goes completely bonkers, the animation goes faster, and the static everywhere? I had no idea God was literally the Slender Man. Before we get to number one, here are some games that didn't quite make the list, but are still disturbing in their own manner.
Let me tell you a little story. When people first heard about how this one game, this game that was considered the greatest game of all time, was getting a direct sequel, people were hyped. They had no idea what to expect. There were so many theories as to what could possibly top the adventure they just had. However, nobody expected what the sequel would actually become. A dark, dreary, disturbing masterpiece. The game I speak of is none other than The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Let me make something clear. Number one isn't any one specific thing in Majora's Mask. Number one is the entire game. Let's just summarize what's happening in this game. You, Link, the hero of time, fall down a large hole, get turned into a Deku scrub, and are now in the world of Termina. You look up, and the one thing that catches your eyes sends shivers down your spine, and downright terrifies you, is a giant angry moon, getting closer and closer until it imminently destroys the world, as well as you. You have 72 in-game hours to stop Skull Kid, defeat four dungeons, collect all the masks, and summon the giants to hold the moon. That's not a lot of time, so you have to go back in time to the beginning of the three days every time to get everything you needed. You eventually summon the four giants and battle Majora's mask on the moon. Now let's talk about some disturbances. First, you're forced to constantly look up at the imminent fate that is the crashing moon into the small world of Termina. You also somehow fall down a giant hole and land in a new world that is somehow able to house this giant moon. This of course is scientifically impossible. So that means either Link was transported to another dimension, or more likely, Link is dead. But that's only a theory, which we'll save for another day. Then you go around to all the denizens of Termina, and you see how they react to the moonfall. And this is where stuff gets really heavy. This is honestly the first Zelda game where you actually feel sympathy for the NPCs. They have emotions. They feel scared, angry, upset, and other feelings toward this moonfall. And who can blame them? However, the most disturbing thing has to be this. See, every time you go back in time, everyone in Termina still dies. Just because you're safe, doesn't mean that they are. You've gone back in time, but these people are still stuck, waiting for the moon to crash. And they don't have magical ocarinas. That means that they do get crushed by the moon. No matter how many times you go back, until you finally defeat Majora, these innocent people are going to die. And even without going back for everything in order to get to the final boss, you still have to go back at least six times. So these people relive being crushed by the moon, their innocent lives coming to an end at least six times, their screams going on hold every single time. Hey guys, be sure to stay tuned after this video for a preview of the next top 10. If you liked the video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, I got a Twitter account. You can follow me if you want to. I mean, I mean, we're fans. You're fans of me, and you know, I can follow you. And you can follow me. We can have this whole following thing. Follow me at a D at DPN seven zero three. I promise you won't be disappointed. At least you know, like seventy five percent of the time. Maybe 50. Also, do you like this outro music? Special thanks to Digital Math for letting me use the Legend of Zelda dubstep remix. His credentials and info are in the description below. Did you agree with my list? Have an idea for a top 10? Or do you just want to talk about how stupid I am? Leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. See you on my next top 10. And until then, stay lovely. On the next Top 10.